Good morning, one and all. On behalf of English Department, Badruga College of Commerce and Arts, I am Yam Shaila Prasad, Assistant Professor in English Department. I extend a warm welcome to the One Day National Webinar on the topic Interactive Learning Environment for Language Development. Badruga College of Commerce and Arts, Department of English, privilege of hosting One Day National Webinar. Before I go on with today's webinar, I would like to give brief details about our college. Ours is a pioneer institute in the field of commerce and arts with 70 years of devote and successful journey. The college offers commerce study at UG and PG level with BCom general, honors, computer applications and MBA in commerce. We have unparalleled achievements of securing university ranks. We have NSS, NCC, and clubs. To name a few, literary club, art, music, and so on. And about our Department of English, Mamta Vaidya Ma'am, head Department of English, along with her team, we hold regular academic activities and seminars. And now, I request K. Anpama Ma'am, Vice Principal, Associate Professor of English, and convener of this webinar, to give opening remarks. Mamta, uh, Anpama, please. Hello, and welcome each one of you to the webinar on interactive learning environment for language development organized by the Department of English, Padruka College of Commerce and Arts. Today, we are fortunate to have Dr. C. Sharda as a resource person for this session. We all know that the interactive approach always encourages the students to interact with each other and with the subject matter, making them part of the lesson. No matter what subject we are teaching, a lesson can become more engaging when it involves conversation. Hope today's session will enrich us further in learning the language and help us to create a language rich environment. Once again, I welcome our friend, Dr. C. Sharda, and we are thankful to her for accepting our invitation to be the resource person. We are also thankful to our honorary secretary, Sri Mukundal Badrukaji, and Director General Professor Abhirama Krishna sir for their support at every step. I congratulate our department for coming together as a team in organizing today's webinar. And we are glad to share that we received the registrations from most of the states of the country. And we also received from abroad such as Sindh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Yemen, Oman, and Qatar. Once again, I welcome all the participants and looking forward to have an interactive, informative, and a wonderful session. Thank you. Sharada Ma'am, Assistant Professor, Assistant Professor and Head Department of English, University Postgraduate College, Secunderabad, OU. She has 24 years of teaching experience at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. She has delivered many guest lectures at different colleges and universities. She has been a resource person at working at workshops for school and college teachers on areas like Effective teaching, soft skills, communication skills, Indian writings in English, post-colonial studies, and literature and films. She is a regular resource person at Dr. Marichana Reddy Human Resource Development Center, UGC HRDC, and Osmania University, IGNO, and PGRRCD. She coordinates, she, yeah, she coordinated one week short term course on gender sensitization and refresher courses in humanities at UGC, HRDC, OU. She is an active, cre active creative writer and bilingual translator. She translated about 20 Telugu short stories in English. Her translations of Dr. Ambedkar's famous work, Annihilation of Caste, and 50 speeches from English to Telugu are published by Telugu Academy. She held many administrative posts like PRO, 
academic coordinator and UGC officer. She was the vice principal of Osman University Postgraduate College, Secunderabad, for two years. She is now heading the Department of English, Osmania University Postgraduate College, Osmania University. Now I request our resource person, Dr. Sri Sharda Ma'am, to give her presentation and enlighten all of us with talk on interactive learning environment for language development. Ma'am, please go ahead. Uh, Shaila Prasad, uh, then Anupama, and especially the head of the Department of English, Mamata Ma'am, uh, for uh, organizing this national webinar on uh, uh, interactive learning environment. Uh, today uh, is a very special day for me because um, you know, uh, something which we all thought it would be on a national scale has gone up to the international scale uh, by way of uh, the participants from countries like Yemen, Sri Lanka, Sindh, Pakistan, Qatar also have uh, shown their interest and have registered uh, for this particular uh, webinar. So that's uh, really something which is very encouraging. And also, uh, you know, it keeps our spirits very high that we English teachers are always on the right tracks to, you know, um, open the uh, frontiers and then uh, to also enrich our knowledge by participating in such webinars like this. And uh, yesterday, uh, I have uh, received an email from uh, the vice principal, Anupama. She sent me the email uh, stating that many of the participants uh, have questions relating to the uh, webinar, like um, why this uh, topic has been chosen or um, uh, what is the relevance of this topic and a few of them from Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra and uh, very interestingly this is just not the English teachers who are uh, showing keen interest but also some school teachers and teachers from the Department of Education and Psychology who also have registered. So I felt that this this is definitely going to elevate uh, uh, you know the responsibility that is bestowed on my shoulders today. Uh, so let us um, actually what I have uh, thought of talking um, is uh, how interaction or how interactive method or a strategy. No, helps in building up a very friendly ambience and environment in the classroom, especially language classroom, be it any language, okay? It could be uh, just not English. It could be Urdu, Telugu, Tamil, Marathi, whatever language. So that is why uh, we have the title language development and not just the English language skills. And uh, as we now know, the whole world is passing through a critical phase and we are all facing, you know, tribulations and different challenges, not just at the home front, but also uh, different uh, fronts. We are uh, being, um, you know, strewn with challenges. So now our challenge as English language teachers or language teachers, uh, how do we really uh, take this uh, challenge and then how do we absorb ourselves into it and how do we resurface with a solution? So that, uh, you know, uh, many of them have posed questions like uh, post-COVID and pre-COVID. 
definitely definitely you know we all have to agree to this point post covid and the pre covid all the fields all the streams all the challenge channels now they are now taking a different turn taking a different curve because of this uh, unprecedented a uh, challenge that is thrown on us education especially now it's been 3 to 4 months since we have all been staying home and uh, of course uh, we are also being very active by participating in webinars and all that uh, and so uh, i am actually warming up myself by answering some of the questions that have been posed to me uh via mails um that why have you chosen this subject and you know how different is this online teaching different from the classroom teaching i am sure there is one uh, teacher uh, ms rajalakshmi kalyani uh, she has actually asked me uh, uh, in the mail uh, that how different is this Uh, from classroom um, experience to the online teaching experience so we will start off uh, from there and slowly we will get to the point yes now we can say that uh, synchronous teaching and asynchronous teaching see very interestingly every you know at the, at the turn of every year or phase of life we have been uh, listening to new terminology like in 2014 we had this selfie as a new term and uh, uh, you know into 2020 uh, since the lockdown has been clamped uh, we are listening to the word webinars okay too much too often we have been listening to these words so we have to also now expand our uh, you know vocabulary in terms of the new terminology that is now coming into being uh, like the synchronous teaching and asynchronous teaching the synchronous teaching is something which we have all been doing all these years in the classroom face to face with the students so uh, maybe if we have 30 students or maybe 40 students we know all the students by their names we know them their personalities their inclinations uh, and, uh, and then their aptitude everything we know because we have been with them and we have been facing them every day in the classroom so that has a different advantage altogether that is a synchronous that is face to face in the classroom whereas today we are moving towards asynchronous classroom asynchronous classroom is that we are now at this point of time what we are performing uh, is asynchronous so that is online uh, online teaching online webinar online evaluation everything has become asynchronous so i think we have to now gear up equip ourselves you know pick up new terminology pick up new technology update ourselves and then move on otherwise you know the show should go on the show sh- the show will never stop for us so without updating ourselves maybe we will we, we, we will la- we will be behind our own colleagues so in order to update and then upgrade our knowledge it is imperative on ourselves to all the time be in touch with the latest trends with the latest technologies and the strategies okay so we all know all these not that i am going to break the ground or i am going to bring the moon down through my webinar that's not really happening here i am only trying to share my experiences as how i have come up with a few strategies 
uh, especially, um, you know, I was um, going to the classroom, uh, Dr. Mari Channa Reddy. Uh, it's a human resource development center in Hyderabad. So I was taking classes, synchronous classes until March 15th. So all of a sudden, this uh, lockdown has been clamped upon us. And then there were a few more classes to be taken. So what to be done? And then uh, they have asked for the online uh, classes. So see, to me, it is absolutely first time. And I am, a, I am that kind of a person who would like to interact with the students. And uh, I am a very uh, friendly kind of a teacher. And uh, with great passion, I move around the classroom. And then th that's my way of teaching. You know, everyone has his or her own style of teaching. Uh, then uh, when I was suddenly asked to do, do the asynchronous, that is online kind of a teaching, it came upon me as a severe jolt. Okay, because I have never been very friendly with the laptop. I just, you know, know how to uh, doc document word as uh, that basic things I know. But I had to, I had to push myself into, you know, it's like suddenly throwing me into the deep ocean. Uh, and I had to uh, surface and then swim and then come out uh, safe. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I took it upon myself and then I started. How do I now go about? See, I'm sharing my experience. Uh, maybe that experience will help many of us here to also share your own experiences or maybe take a few leaps from here and there and then enrich our own way of teaching and develop our own style of teaching. Definitely that will happen today. Um, I, I was um, actually teaching um, uh, the group one officers, the military officers. So their level is advanced level. And I was supposed to teach them vocabulary, right? Uh, uh, vocabulary and syntax and then presentation skills and many such things. Now, what do I teach them uh, online, especially about presentation skills? So I had to uh, innovate. Uh, a process or a strategy presentation skills would definitely uh, you know be bombastic and it definitely explodes positively when you are there in the classroom and you are f facing them you can study their body language you can you know um, tell correct them and then you uh, it, it is going to be very beautiful rapport only when you are there in the classroom especially with the presentation skills so now it's a challenge uh, how do I uh, teach them presentation skills so I what I did was uh, I'm moving to the um, uh, like uh, how what I did was I had to be very creative okay I had to create a, a space which is very creative, a space where the students or the participants uh, participate. OK, it's we, uh, we have to now create a space uh, where the students become creative. We as teachers also should be creative. We should participate and they should also participate. For that, what I did was to pick a few videos. OK pick a few videos like um, uh, presentation skills who who is the best speaker in the you know uh, available on the youtube uh, or the best speeches ever made in the history suddenly you know as you all know uh, we are english teachers and we immediately you know we uh, that um, speech of martin luther king junior it strikes us because it is so striking it is full of passion it is full of emotion it is so engaging it is so absorbing and then it is so motivating and it is highly inspiring so what i did was to bring in all these elements whatever i discussed with you now uh, by showing them the speech 
uh, of uh, on the youtube i played the speech of uh, martin luther king junior i have a dream right i have a dream then i asked them to listen to uh, the words that he is repeating okay he he repeats the words like i have a dream i have a dream i have a dream so he continuously emphasizes on this phrase i have a dream then he brings in the beauty of language if you look at the speech and intently listen to the speech of martin luther king you come across it as a wonderful speech with is enriched and punctuated with the, the beautiful uh, uh, figures of speech okay how he makes it happen is he uh, brings one, uh, two opposites together he brings in two opposites together he brings in the deserts and he brings in the uh, the verdant fields he brings in you know the forgive the word forgiveness and the word unforgiveness how he brings in the opposites and how he very beautifully you know uses employs figures of speech in order to you know so powerfully motivate a whole generation not just one generation but generations to come by by his speech then i after uh, they they have listened to the speech i asked them i threw a challenge at them see we are now uh at home we are now all locked down okay take this speech as an inspiration where uh, you know the repetition the repetition is for the focus the repetition is for the emphasis okay so you take the repetition i have a dream and you uh, write something about how you are dreaming of having a you uh, know virus free country or virus free environment so th that is how i created well uh, take 2 minutes time you take 3 minutes time and you take the cues okay you take the hints from the speech how uh, he is laying his emphasis with his powerful figures of speech use them in your own way don't bring uh, one full page of speech just write five to six lines very coherently and then the topic is i dream of uh, covid free environment so that was so beautifully you know used by the participants uh, and then uh, uh, to after two or three minutes how am i interacting with them that's a very important point here see they are all muted okay they can just see me i can't see them but they can chat with me the chat box is kept open for them that is how i wanted it to be i wanted it to be interactive not by listening to them because listening again uh, everyone starts speaking and it is all chaos okay there would be confusion so what i felt was to open the chat box and then um, whatever answer whatever question whatever idea they want to share with me or i want to share with them we would immediately interact through the chat box which is kept open all the time so uh, how beautifully a few of them have come with the speech i have a dream uh, to um, you know to see the world which is free from uh, covid i have a dream to see the babies breathing without the mask i have a dream to see the men and women holding hands and walking the streets without any fears see how beautifully they have come up with this only th th this can happen when we as teachers you know uh we give them the opportunity to create and participate through interaction so we use these tools okay we are using the tools we, what tool i have used online i have used the youtube okay i have used the speech and and then i have asked them to study the body 
body language okay in junior martin luther's speech there is no scope for body language uh, studying body language because he is surrounded by people and we can only listen to his powerful speech so for body language the do's and the don'ts there is one um, uh, speech Uh, which has been adjudged as the best speech ever uh, denzel washington uh, he he is a hollywood um, uh, he is a hollywood actor okay Mo- he is known more for his oratorical skills than his acting skills so you please uh, go to youtube after the class or whenever you find time denzel washington um he is also a very powerful speaker so uh, when you listen to these speeches and then you uh, also understand the body language of these powerful speakers uh, naturally we also try to imbibe them and then again we also try to uh, use them when we are talking like so that is how i did my presentation skills which actually had come out you know so well and uh, the students were very happy uh, with the kind of uh, tools that we have used so it all depends upon the tool so tool is see we we all know the carpenters have tools of course all the workers have tools so maybe i would like to take this example of a carpenter who has a small chisel in his hands okay with uh, or maybe a sculptor a sculptor uh, he has a small chisel in his hands the tool is the same but with the tool how he is creating uh, you know artifacts the same chisel is uh making a very beautiful statue of a woman the same uh, chisel uh, is also carving out uh, maybe the uh, the face or the bust of a king so with the same tool he is using his creative prowess and then he is coming up with the result so what we have to now as teachers uh do is to take the tool into our hands and how we use the tool in what creative manner we use the tool is important for us just like the carpenter okay with the same chisel he makes dining table he with the same chisel he makes the doors he he, he also makes a parrot or maybe a small uh, doll okay so we also are like like them okay we are also like artists okay we have the tools in our hands and how we use the tools creatively innovatively and come up with the, you know beautiful result is in our hands as teachers then after this uh, presentation skills uh, they asked me to um, teach vocabulary okay everybody wants Uh, this to happen vocabulary vocabulary and vocabulary uh, everybody has asked uh, me yesterday in the email most of them uh, i remember seven to eight of them have asked for how to teach vocabulary and i really felt so happy because um, as english teachers it is the onus is on us to uh, how to teach vocabulary okay this also i have ta- taught to the same uh, um, group one officers at an advanced level okay see this i have taught at the advanced level school teachers may reduce the level okay junior college teachers may moderate it uh, ug teachers may take it to the next level pg teachers may uh, you know take it to the advanced level so how we uh, uh, not um, how we use it and how we are uh, discerning this in order to make different uh, levels to meet the linguistic uh, uh, you know aspirations um, and hunger of the uh, learners okay so when uh, first thing i have realized as a teacher uh, english teacher when i am teaching vocabulary teaching the word directly or by giving the definition is not going to work so that's my that's my opinion okay each of you you also have your own opinions with due respect okay i'm talking about my experience as how 
I teach vocabulary in the classroom. I never teach uh, directly the meaning of the word. Never I do that. What I do is first I teach them uh, connotation and denotation. Okay. See, uh, our students, they are so innocent that they think that vocabulary is just synonyms and antonyms. Knowing more words is having more vocabulary. That is that is an illusion. That's not the correct thing. According to me, you should, you should also have different elements under vocabulary. All We all know that. We all know that. Like the collocation, like the denotation, like the connotation and the idiomatic expressions and figures of speech and then the phrasal verbs. The beauty of language depends on all these things. It's not just the, that I am using a very fantastic, fanciful word, so I am using good English. It's never that way. The beauty of a language lies in its idiomatic expressions, in its proverbs, in its phrasal verbs, in its synonyms and uh, the symbols and the figures of speech. So let the students understand that it is a huge canvas. It's not just about synonyms and antonyms. So let them first try to read uh, the, the connotation. Let them know the difference between the connotation and denotation. So for which I have, um, I would like to share with you this picture. Okay. I am I'm sure you are all able to see this picture. If there is any problem, please let the uh, technical team know about it. Okay. Connotations in advertisements. Again, I have taken, you know, advertisements because advertisements are so catchy and our young students, they get, you know, carried away by the advertisements uh, because they are so full of color and then uh, very beautifully designed, innovatively designed and uh, in a very creative fashion. So first I uh, took this picture, connotations in advertisements. So immediately, you know, the, the, this is a picture of an animal, okay? And everybody knows that this animal is jaguar. And most of our English teachers have, uh, uh, and students also have read the poem, uh, jaguar, which is a very, very, uh, you know, thought-provoking poem um, uh, of the 20th century British literature. So jaguar, then what can be read here? Okay, how do you read this picture? First, let them read this picture. So, how do you read this picture? Uh, I don't know. It had this been an interactive session, if I had uh, a chance to chat with you, I would have asked you because I, as a teacher, when I am teaching uh, vocabulary or any such uh, you know, elements in the classroom, I never give away the answer. I never give away the answer at the very first shot. First, I, I give them the picture or anything, anything. If there is no picture, I'll, I give them the hints. I always give them the hints. I always give them the clues. So let them rattle their, rack their brains. Let them, you know, uh, try to explore, expand, let them do it on their own. Why should we give away the piece of bread into their hands easily? Why should we give away a piece of cake into their hands so easily? If you give a piece of cake, they just eat and enjoy a relish and then forget. Let them know how the cake is made. What are the ingredients that go into the cake, making, of, making or baking of the cake? That's how I believe in otherwise you know it all happens uh, for the sake of you know the classroom so um, le le uh, what i do is first throw hints at them i ask them what do you see here they they give answers like um, i see an animal okay very good what could this animal be jogwa right good then what color is this animal uh, they would say gray grayish black Okay, fine. Or now, what is the uh, what is the posture of the animal? Okay, what is the posture of the animal? No, what is how is it 
presented to us is it sitting down is it lying down is it sleeping or is it in action it's in action and how is the facial expressions of the animal the jaguar so they say it is so ferocious look at the way it has opened up its mouth and how it has kept is the front paws ready and the back the back uh, the uh, you know the legs in the air and then it is ready to plunge it is ready to jump it is ready to take on okay this is how they have read this advertisement okay the, the, the picture not the advertisement i'm coming to the advertisement later this is how they read the picture they said yeah we, uh, when i asked them look at the posture until then they didn't uh, look at the posture okay they were just looking at the animal then i asked them what is the color of the animal then i asked them uh, um now uh, what are the facial expressions that you very prominently see in this picture only after i got the answers then i got down to why this picture has been used why not any other picture okay so this is what i have taken from the automobile jaguar okay jaguar is uh, uh, it's a very 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 sleek and very modern car and most of the young students you know they love to go by jaguar because it's so stylish yes stop there it is stylish and then next it is it is so powerful yes and then it has agility because the because of the speed yes good so going by the connotations of re agility speed power ferociousness yeah that is why the makers of uh, the jaguar have taken this picture going by the connotations they want their car to be red like this they want their car to be seen like this that it is always ready to roar it is always ready to speed off it is always ready to show off its you know power this can be read through the picture and why the makers have taken this wonderful the posture the expressions and the animal which stands for power and all is done wonderful then the color why have they chosen this color um uh, what is this color they immediately said okay silver gray and metallic that's also important silver gray and metallic wonderful so what is this telling us what is this color connotation okay silver metallic gray is luxury is luxury it's it's unique so your car is a luxury car which is which you can read by the color of the an emblem animal jaguar you can uh, tell the people that it is its engine is very powerful and roaring to go all these connotations of power and you know agility and the speed and then luxury is told in one picture so beautiful uh, it is to make the students understand why this picture has been chosen by the makers of the jaguar cars is because of the connotation you can read through this picture so this is how i uh, slowly get down to by making them understand the connotation first okay let me show you another picture so this i uh, i haven't given them in the earlier picture i i already gave them that it is the jaguar okay this is up to you now Mm, um, the participants may give me the answer towards the end of the session when we open up the chat box okay so this is also an emblem of uh, a car now we will read the connotation we will read the picture what is this picture uh, the picture of a horse okay wonderful what is the color and then what is the posture how is its tail is it flying and then the mane or uh, the body the, the back the back the hair is the mane how is it it is is it falling down or is it flying high read all that is there in this picture 
and you will get the connotation what connotation will you get and through these so many connotations that you can read from this picture you will get the, the idea of how the makers of this uh, uh car it begins with m okay this is how i tell them okay it begins with m and even if they don't uh, guess the answer i will give them that it has uh, uh one two three four five six uh letters and it ends with g begins with m and ends with g i'm not giving the answer you guess it because it is a horse it's known for its sturdiness it's known for its speed and horse power which has come the horse power which which is a terminology for the engines okay the speed and all which it has come from the the power of the horse so read it like this and give me the answer i tell them first i give them you know i, I make them understand first picture next picture let them guess let them guess if they fail to guess i give them hints like i gave you hints now it begins with m ends with g and then uh, it has everything to do with the horse okay so you you mm, think about it and then give me the answer at the end of the session this is how uh, connotations are but uh, let us go to this picture okay this can be used for many um, ideas like what can you see here i ask them you take just 30 seconds and then read this picture what do you see in this picture i ask them so one person says i see a car okay is the car in the forefront or in the background okay background what do you see in the forefront foreground uh, a man okay is how do you see him you know the man as a very rich person or do you see him as the owner of the car no uh, then what do you see him as uh, you, you see him as a homeless person or maybe poverty or maybe hunger uh, maybe lonely maybe depressed so see and then uh, in the background see the picture is just not a picture in the background there is a car you see how riches and poverty they are very close in this picture but far apart and we can show how these two differences can be shown in just one picture maybe students please take this picture and write something like a poem okay you can write four lines on this uh, you use all the words that you have you know uh, got as you have seen this picture like homeless or hunger or, or lonely take all these and then you weave a poem or maybe you write four lines or maybe you come up with a quotation on your own this is how they can uh, write something on their own they can create something on their own they can participate and then we are giving them the space we are giving them the tools we are giving them all the hints the end product should come from them we are only fa facilitators online it becomes the teacher's role becomes a uh, facilitator we facilitate we moderate okay as we uh, as teachers how many roles to be done every day 100 different roles of being a prompter i all uh, i am a very very good prompter i know when students are trying to come up with an answer and they are still struggling with it i i prompt okay i throw a small hint at them i don't give them the answer but i throw a hint at them and then immediately they get the answer so claps for somebody who had given the right answer that's a piece of reward they feel so proud about themselves and <clears throat> they will never forget so that we will come to later but we will go back to how this can be done okay this uh, guess the word through the pictures okay synonyms like when we, when i am teaching them synonyms uh, let me just take a sip of water
Okay. Um, I show them this picture. Okay. Take uh, maybe five seconds or so. Read this picture. And then just whatever word comes to you or words that come to you, keep them with you. Because I'm not going to give you the answer. The answer is going to come from you. That's how I tell them. Okay, so after seeing this picture, many of them get carried away by, oh, this is dawn, dusk. Uh, I think most of you also on seeing this picture must be thinking of uh, the words dawn, dusk, and then the lion, and then, and then the uh, beauty of nature and all that. Okay, go. Give as many words that come to you on seeing this picture. Right? Okay. Now, somebody says, I, I, one, one student tells, yeah, I see the lion. Okay. You have seen the lion. Right? Uh, somebody says, I see the aurora light. Okay. Aurora light. So, yeah, wonderful. If you are able to see the light and call it aurora, it's very beautiful uh, because aurora light is this twilight. Okay. You can talk of twilight here. So many words. So many words can be taught through this one picture. Like you can teach them dawn, you can teach them dusk because we are not sure whether this is dawn or dusk. We can talk about the aurora light. We can talk about um, uh, the, 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 the twilight and we can talk about the dim light. Okay, I'm talking about light and light and light. So it means that I'm talking something with light as the background, not the lion. Okay, I tell them. I'm not talking about the lion. I'm talking about the la light in the background. And there is something in the foreground. Okay. Background is the light, which is dim. In the foreground, there is this lion. So, and the lion, uh, you cannot see the lion clearly. You can only see the outline of the lion. Because the shade or uh, the light, because of the dim light, you can see only the outline of the lion. So when you can see only the outline because of the dim light or the dusk light or the twilight or any light in the backdrop, it becomes dash. Okay, I, I give them the clue. So they don't get it. Okay, they are asking for more clues. Then I say, okay, it begins with S. Um, I'm not giving them the de see definition is already given through the picture. If the definition is given in an isolated form, they will never remember this. Okay, I have given the definition in the context by showing the picture. So three things are happening in here. The definition of the word is happening indirectly. Picture is being shown and the context has been created. It is a very beautiful way of teaching the vocabulary. If you are teaching a word and its definition in isolation, the word can only be got by the students by rote. They get it by heart. They forget it the next day. They will never be able to use it in their own context and situation. If we show, we can show, we can use this laptop or online as a tool and show the picture. And I have already uh, set down the definition by telling them light, dim light or twilight and the outline of the lion in the foreground, whereas the light is in the background. So any outline that you can see in the background where there is dim light is called silhouette. I'm not giving them the word. Even now, I'm not giving them the word because I, there is no time. I think we are running short of time also. I don't know. We have already. Um, I should check the time. Oh, oh, oh. We are already 12.30 and I'm still here. Um, so, uh, they, they will try to say uh, silhouette is not the word that comes to them. I'm, uh, I'll give them the uh, clues. Like it begins with S. It ends with a or it sounds like this is my very favorite thing and i also give them it sounds like omelet so immediately they remember okay omelet silhouette omelet silhouette so they will never forget 
so the way it sounds because silhouette is a word that we don't use it generally in our day to day life okay students generally don't do it but they have to build their vocabulary they should not forget the vocabulary words that they have learned why should we waste the entire exercise and let it go down the drain so let them remember how will they remember the picture the definition and the context three of them have been created and then the word has been told to them only after they have you know absorbed all this and then the word sounds like you know silhouette it's difficult to remember then how do we remember it omelet is a word which you remember every you eat you relish it you enjoy it so omelet silhouette you can learn it this way i tell them okay next word is uh, this is i want to yeah this one i would like to because we are running short of time and i am still i have so much to discuss with you all my dear colleagues so this picture i showed them okay um okay this is uh it looks like love the shape of the leaf looks like love okay all the time i tell them how to read a picture because i have already discussed with you i don't have to discuss once the picture is shown to them they now know how to read the picture they have to go by the color they have to go by the shape they have to go by every possible angle every possible element take the shape and then something is written on it okay luck fine uh, then uh, how do you there is one word that can be taught through this picture which is which means luck okay uh, uh, which means luck and which is a happy coincidence a happy coincidence and which is a very uh, which is very lucky how do we teach that word mm, so i i just got okay if you have seen the advertisements of goa tourism goa tourism uh, uses this word quite often i told them uh, they come up with hoardings across the country by you no know, inviting the tourists to goa goa tourism uh, has used this goa dash okay goa dash it so even then if they don't get it i just throw one word at them it begins with s okay uh yes then okay uh it ends with the sound like um uh, pity pity i give them the first letter s and how it ends pity even then if they don't get it then i give one more clue one more clue one more clue until they get it until they get it i never give the answer all I never never give the answer on my own unless i know it's five uh, two three times if they fail and if there is no time then i come up with the word serendipity okay serendipity it is a difficult word okay definitely they will forget it but how to make them remember because goa tourism goa serendipity come to goa serendipity so they will remember that so how you know a word vocabulary definition uh, can be taught not in isolation but in context through the picture will definitely be etched in the brains of the students will be there in the memory of the students forever and forever and i'm sure they will be you know yearning and craving for many such beautiful words and they will definitely use these words in their you know day to day vocabulary and they can never forget this so this is enmity so okay, you can see the picture see we are running short of time so i'm just flipping through the uh pictures so this is enmity okay they they immediately get this picture uh there is an argument they might say there is an argument they might say there is a confrontation okay there is a rivalry or maybe enmity these are the words that come to their mind as see the, as they see this picture then i tell them okay what is the word that i am looking for through this picture uh begins with n okay um n and also it's it it sounds like enemy 
uh, the very the very meaning of this word is enmity. Okay, the the synonym for it also begins with sounds like sounds like enemy enemy. So they will try. What begins with n and sounds like enemy? Then 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 go on go on go on giving them. Finally, the word comes out. Nemesis, nemesis, nemi, enemy, nemi, enemy. See the sound. They will never forget. Nemesis. If you just give them and tell them this nemesis means enmity, they will immediately forget. But see the sound. Nemesis, enmity. Both are sounding, you no, know, alike. And that is how, you know, my strategy is. to teach vocabulary there are many such strategies but uh, you know there is very limited time they asked me to begin at 11:30 it's already 12:30 so it means i have to stop by see i have taken one poem mending wall by robert frost and uh, our uh, english teachers can use this for, there are two words wall and wall which i have underlined and i have asked them to give the negative connotation or the positive connotation and what this wall means in what context so that also can be taught to them punctuation when you want to teach syntax okay which is very important many of our students you know they fail at this horribly uh, in the punctuation part okay so how to teach again this can be taught in a very beautiful manner i am sure you are able to all read this an english teacher asked her students to punctuate this sentence correctly everybody here i i know 90% of you have read this a woman without her man is nothing so this is a kind of a statement given by an english teacher and has asked the students to punctuate this okay so in order to teach the significance of punctuation see our students think that punctuation is just a small dot or small dot and a tail and then two dots and then a small hyphen these are going to make or break lives the only small dot is going to make or break a life or a relationship even such things happen uh, let us have a look at this let them know let them understand that uh significance of uh, punctuation can never be brushed aside so all males in the class wrote a woman comma without her man comma is nothing so this is see do, do not take it uh, otherwise this is just for fun okay uh, there there is no patriarchal uh, <laughs> attitude uh, given to this it's just for fun okay we are learning punctuation so what the men wrote is a woman a woman without her man is nothing so they are reducing a woman's status to nothingness by just adding a comma here and there so women are more clever automatically so then a girl stood up and wrote like wrote this see how she had changed that entire meaning a woman colon without her man is nothing without her man is nothing so how that uh, entire impact okay uh, the two perspectives you can see one is patriarchal perspective given by the men by using comma the second one is as a feministic perspective <laughs> by using in a colon by using a small dot you can change the perspective let the students understand the importance the significance of the dots they are not just dots and tails and then two dots and small dash they can break the lives they can make the lives they can preserve the relationships they can also change the perspectives like this another last important one look at this uh, latest ad which i have picked up for us black baby crib for sale okay black baby crib for sale i would have loved to have a very lengthy discussion on this because all of you if you read this black baby crib for sale immediately there comes racial discrimination 
right racial discrimination see how the perspective changes black baby crib for sale so a crib meant only for black babies so there is so much of racism here in this advertisement so the makers of this advertisement have not realized that a small mistake is leading to a huge discussion and it is growing out of proportions and taking it to the level of racism just by not going by the punctuation right so what can it be like i would say crib for sale is enough why should you say baby crib for sale crib is not meant for big people like us it is not meant for adults like us okay crib for sale would have been easy no ah uh, a baby there is a repetition unnecessary redundancy okay baby crib is not okay crib for sale that is black in color the crib which is black in color actually it the innocently it has been advertised not really looking at the kind of furor it would create internationally by you know not going by the punctuation there or just because they have repeated the word twice so that also leads to so much of you know uh, confusion and all that see we should be very careful that is what we understand through this words and statements that we should be very careful especially english teachers the entire onus rests on our shoulders to teach them um uh proper english and tell them that everything is to be you know understood in the context okay within the context not just by the definition that is really going to help them actually i have many things to share with you but there is only one hour which is given to me and one hour is actually not enough of course uh, but i may have to stop here because there are many questions that i need to answer so i am uh, going back um, to this where now can you now can you all see me properly can we open the chat box uh i take this uh, as a great pleasure to have uh, i have not yet finished i have to take some questions okay yeah ma'am yeah uh, yeah, ma yeah yeah okay um i may i know how many participants are there uh, as of now 253 somewhere okay 250 is a wonderful uh, you know gathering Thank i you, am you have elaborated and you have given detailed presentation starting from literature perspective that is i have a dream and where the people can start up with listening skills and all and throwing a light on uh, about how to build the uh, the body language and pictorial majorly the brainstorming activity these all things and uh, as you said as you always welcome questions Yeah. there is a much debatable as well as a controversial question has come in as oh. in this covid section as in this covid period people are going with online teaching people are going with online teaching so there is a question which is comes as a debatable and controversial as i said how do you defend teaching community those blame that english faculty misuse english lab and they don't they don't teach anything in english lab because now everywhere we are going with uh, online teaching right and when we take up the students to the english lab there is a section of people who always blames that english lab they don't teach anything and they simply so how do you defend that is one point and another one throw a light on how english labs are necessary please english labs are necessary yeah ma english labs and okay. teaching as online tools we use now okay so the first question let us take uh, yeah. may i know who is the person who had raised this question this is from my email madam that is sujata and they read uh, something okay okay so uh, how the language labs english language labs are being misused okay yes. see uh, see it is it all 
I have already discussed that uh, in my session today. The tool is in our hands. How do yeah. we use the tool is up to us. Okay. See, there if there is if there is a library and there are hundreds and thousands of books. Now, when yeah. I don't, I don't, I if I don't go to the library and read the books, it's my mistake. It's not the mistake of the library. Okay. So if you have the computer lab where all the software has been uploaded, and if 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 a student is uh, interested, let him let the student go and use it. It is not the mistake of the computer lab. Just like the way the the library is there inviting you and I don't go to the library. It's not the mistake of the library. It's my mistake in the same way. If the computer lab is not being utilized properly, it is not the mistake of the computer lab. It is a mistake of the users not use, utilizing it properly. That's my answer. Next thing is, uh, see, yesterday a few of them have asked me, I have written down, let me answer, also answer those questions. Uh, um, what are the online tools? Okay, or what are there are there are many online tools. Uh, if you want to take down, uh, I mean, I think I will I will type it out. Okay. Um, one second, I am typing. Okay. Uh, K A H O O T. This is uh, this is also a tool. We, we we teachers can download this, and we can either customize the tool or we can use that tool by itself. Okay, um, like uh, the, um, the, the, this app gives us many tools to make flashcards or maybe pictures, or we can use the tools like we use the pencil and pen and all that. They are giving, they are providing us with the tools, and we can customize using those tools. We can customize according to our uh, situation and our students' level. Okay, and I will give you more, uh, um, more of the. Uh, somebody asked uh, about gamification. Gamification. Okay, this is a very important uh, po point to be discussed. How this term is now being, you know. Um, talked about very frequently gamification so how english language can be taught through games um, you have like levels like like our temple run everybody knows this temple run okay one level uh, you reach and you are successful uh, you get some rewards and you go to the next level and to the next level so it goes on the levels begin from the lowest to the next level to the advanced level in the same way many such english games have been uh, created uh, for the sake of our students we can also use them i am giving you some game apps like uh, class do joe i'm typing it if you want you can take whoever wants you they can take Class, class, do, joke. This is a game, okay, which is going to help the students uh, be engaged and it also helps them in improving their critical thinking, problem solving. Of, of course, we know that video games are helping our children to uh, evolve mentally. Uh, critically thinking, uh, critical thinking also gets enhanced and they get a lot of, they, they they are motivated to play these games so uh, class do joe and then uh, uh, you have another uh, one is brainscape here you can teach them vocabulary okay many such uh, um, games are there available uh, i am giving my number if anybody wants to uh, contact me they can contact me this is my email this is my email that's my number okay you can message me uh, I will definitely 
uh, I would love to talk with you. I would love to, you know, discuss things with you. So that is about gamification. And another question I wrote down is somebody has asked, uh, uh, will you be able to teach British literature? Yes, British literature is my strength. I have been teaching it for the past 20 years. But today we have planned out for this uh, interactive learning how it improves the the learning environment uh, if you are so if you are very interactive how it will improve the uh, language okay any language be it uh, telugu tamil or english so then uh, mm, some of them had asked me how would you uh, deal with the english phobia Okay, English phobia. That's a problem with many of our students. That is because right from the beginning, they have been conditioned by this idea that English is a foreign language and English is a difficult language. And uh, they say that grammar is very difficult. So you will fail in grammar if you don't come to the classes regularly. This I have as a student also listened to. And even now many rural area students also uh, are under the impression. To drive away that phobia, we need to actually do such kind of activities in the classroom. Okay, interactive class, strategic, uh, and then um, participatory and creative, so that it doesn't become monotonous and so that it doesn't always become one sided from the teacher. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, after listening to such kind of interactive teaching, the phobia will fly off on its own. Okay, I think these are the. Um, one more uh, question comes in. Ah, yes. Hmm. That is how to teach uh, writing skills in interactive sessions now, COVID situation where we go online. Yes. Uh, writing, teach, skills. It's writing skills. And uh, how writing. we can evaluate that. Yes, yes. See, we can also do the scaffolding kind of uh, uh, strategy we can use. Scaffolding is let the advanced uh, level students, okay, help the peers. Okay. Say for example, okay, that is scaffolding, supporting. Scaffold is nothing but support, okay? Uh, let the advanced uh, learners help the peers. Let them form in groups during the COVID period, okay? During the mm -hmm. COVID period, that's a question, right? So they can form into teams. Let them get together, two or four of them together. They can form into groups. And then writing skills when it is being taught by the teacher online, assignments are given to them, like long term assignments, short term assignments. Assignments can be evaluated by the teacher or by the, uh, um, the, the students who are in advanced level and then can be discussed. Discussion can happen online. Definitely. So next question, sir. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. There is one more question that falls into English fraternity. Basically, being English teachers, basic being English teachers, we are not equipped with IT knowledge. So, do you suggest any other method so that English fraternity can handle this situation? Yes. Let you please take my own example, right? See, yeah. some time ago, um, uh, my senior had asked me to write something and bring it to her. That was some seven, eight years ago or so, okay? So I wrote the entire thing on uh, bunches of papers, reams of paper. I took it to her and uh, I submitted it to my senior. So she looked at me in surprise and asked me, do you write on paper? Okay, then where else one does writing? Okay, one writes only on the paper, right? So she said, don't you use the computer? No, no, no. Computer is so terrible. Computer is like a monster. Computer is something which is coming from an alien planet. So I don't want to handle computer. So she took me, she sat beside me, uh, and then she taught me how to handle the computer basics. She had taught me basics. Today, see, uh, I'm doing all my work on the computer, right? It, it's like driving. Uh, I'm so scared of driving. And I don't sit in front of the steering. I will never be able to go on to the road. It's the same thing. It is so easy. If we are able to handle our phones, can't we handle our laptops? It's easy uh, unless we sit in front of it. I'm able to do all these PPTs, things all that. Some time ago, I didn't even know that you can write on a computer, right? So throwing have a attitude. Throwing the light <laughs> once again. Let's see it is mother of all the inventions. 
<laughs> yes, 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 yes. Done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank and you so there much. are a few more, more questions, questions, but we are running short of time. Short of time. And, uh, See, those, no, those of them, yes. one second, one ma second. Those of them who have questions can mail it to me. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Okay. For the participants also, we do keep on your questions answered by madam in personal too. Right. And now I... Yeah, for the participants, the uh, feedback link is already shared. That is, and now I request Mamta Vadya Ma'am, Head Department of English and Coordinator of this webinar to give formal vote of thanks. Good morning, all of you. And uh, I know this is not enough. The time was absolutely not enough. Uh, the, the, the speech was so enthralling. Sharda Madam taught us how to uh, teach presentation skills, vocabulary skills, and Dr. Sharda we have to call you again and again, I know. This is absolutely not enough. I thank Sharda Madam. She has always accepted our invitation and uh, she, is, uh, she has been true to the proverb. A friend in need is a friend indeed. And uh, apart from Sharda Madam, I thank our uh, Director General Sri Abhiramakrishna uh, for uh, giving us the approval for this webinar and our Secretary Sri uh, Mukundlal uh, Badrukaji. Uh, my first thanks should go to Anupama, who has contacted uh, Madam Sharda and arranged all this webinar. My special thanks go to Deepa Madam for uh, uh, giving us invitation cards and Google Forms and all other technical things. Uh, Shaila Prasad, of course, being the moderator, and uh, Mr. Naveen from uh, IQAC. Uh, again, one more uh, special thanks goes to Dr. M. Srinivas, who has been asked to me to conduct webinar. If he had not pushed me so far, we wouldn't have plunged into it. Uh, technical team, thank you very much, Hayat Basha, Nazir, and uh, all the staff members for their good wishes. One more special thanks goes to all the participants if participants is not there, then the webinar wouldn't have been successful. And my special thanks to the, all the international participants, especially from Pakistan, Yemen, Sri Lanka, Oman, Qatar. And I just saw one in the chat box. Uh, a participant from Philippines is also logged in. And thanks to all the participants, this has encouraged us to come out with more such webinars, actually, for the benefit of all the uh, all our colleagues and teachers all over the world. Thank you once again.